How are you? After Act 1 of Julius Caesar, let's get started with Act 2. Act 2, Scene 1 is a longish scene and I'm going to do it in 6 parts so that it doesn't look like a very daunting kind of a video. Okay, so you can do it at your leisure. Listen to it multiple times because Shakespeare needs that. You need to constantly revise and read and listen again and again in order to understand and any doubts, smallest of doubts, please ask. Okay, we have a very different system of addressing doubts. You know, we don't do ki us din we will do a live class or us din us samay at 5 o'clock between 5 and 5 30 you can ask a doubt no our chat box is open 24 by 7 you can ask a doubt anytime and as soon as i see i generally have a habit of replying and clarifying that doubt okay so let's get started with act 2 scene 1 we have seen all that happened in act 1 right the stage has been set. We have seen what Cassius has been doing, how he has been manipulating Brutus, right? How he has been kind of trying to get support of the other senators in Rome in order to get rid of Julius Caesar. So let's look at part one explanation video of act two. This takes place in the orchard of Brutus's hoof. Okay, so enter Brutus. What Lucius Ho? Now, who is Lucius? Lucius is his servant okay so he asks hello lucius where are you i cannot tell by the position of the stars okay because remember what happened in act one where they were kind of a little rattled by whatever was happening that night a lot of thunder lightning and very unusual sights i cannot by the position of the stars give guess how near today we i cannot tell by the position the progress of the stars uh, how close is it to daybreak you know how whether it is going to be morning time very soon right so again he asked lucius are you there are you there i would it were my fault to sleep so soundly when lucius went awake i say what lucius so he's constantly asking lucius because he's not able to see him he's not able to spot him perhaps it's too dark so he says i wish i had the weakness of sleeping so deeply sleep so soundly i wish i could actually sleep very soundly right but he's not able to and then he again asks for lucius come and the fact that you know when lucius went and with a question mark it is kind of indicating what it's indicating some amount of impatience that kind of a thing on stage is what you would have found right he's a little impatient he's a little irritated that he's not able to spot lucius so then he says wake up lucius and then lucius enters called you my lord did you call me so he's coming and inquiring whether he was looking for him whether he was calling him he says get me a taper in my study lucius when it is lighted come and call me here so he says Put a candle, taper means candle, Mombati. Put a candle in my study, Lucius. And when it is lit, then you call me. So, and then he says, I will, my Lord. And then Brutus is talking to himself. He says, it must be by his death. Now, this is an important line. Why is it important? Because it kind of shows what is there on Brutus's mind. It must be by his death means that the only way is to kill, kill Caesar. His death means Caesar's death. So it is an important line because it shows what is there on his mind and perhaps it is because of that that he is not able to sleep soundly, right? He is awake at an unearthly hour. So he says the only way is to kill Caesar and for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him. On my part, I have no real personal reason to harm him spur him means you know to harm him to hurt him in any way to spurn at him i don't really have any particular reason other than the common good but for the general me and I, I mean it is only for the common good that i would want to kill caesar otherwise at an interpersonal level i really have no reason to get rid of julius caesar understood so he says he wants to be crowned king. He would be crowned. That Julius Caesar wants to be king. And that is where the entire political insecurity that we saw even in the first scene with Flavius and Marullus 
is kind of continuing whether it is with Cassius or Brutus or any of the other senators they're all feeling insecure that once Caesar becomes king and an all-powerful king they will all be rendered insignificant and very powerless so he says he wants to be crowned king how that might change his nature there is a question so he says the question is how would becoming king change the nature of Julius Caesar that is something which they are not sure of but they think he will change for the worse and he explains that now so he says just like that is the question it is the bright day that brings forth the adder adder is referring to the poisonous snake so he says that just like the sunshine and the bright day brings out that's when the small and poisonous adder snakes actually come out and that makes it necessary to do what to walk carefully it is the bright day that brings forth the adder and that craves wary walking wary means you are a little wary you are a little careful while walking craves means that necessitates that means that you need to be careful while walking lest you should step on a snake and the snake will bite you okay it won't do a nagin dance it will bite you okay uh, crown him so then he says that it is necessary for us to walk carefully even on a bright and sunny day because that's when the small and poisonous snakes do actually come out similarly evil things can come out of what looks good that is what he's trying to do say that you know you may look at a sunny bright day and say wow what fantastic weather but that's when you could actually get bit by a snake similarly you may think oh caesar getting becoming king is a great thing but that's when the real evil and negative could actually happen now this is important crown him and followed by a question mark why is this question mark important because that indicates that he doesn't want to he's questioning it you know do we really the question mark indicates that he does not like the whole sound of the fact that he's going to be crowned king you know he wants to he wants to be crowned he's not liking the sound which is what is this this question mark is <coughs> indicating okay if we crown him king I admit we would be giving him power to do destruct. So he says, then I grant we put a sting in him that at his will he may do danger with. So he says that if we actually uh, uh, give him, make him the king, we would actually giving him the power to do lots of evil things. Danger with means to destruct and destruct who? All the others who are feeling insecure politically as a result of the rise of Julius Caesar after his triumph over Pompey. Understood till now? Good. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power and to speak truth of Caesar. What does this mean? Why is Brutus saying these lines? The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins. So he is saying that abuse of power, greatness, abuse of power happens when it gets separated from what? It gets separated from remorse, remorse from power. Remorse indicates mercy, kindness, empathy. It's a little ironic that Brutus is saying that because of whatever they are planning. So he says the abuse of power because these guys are also in a sense abusing their power of you know coming together and assassinating Julius Caesar, right? So he says that the abuse of power is when it is separated from mercy, power from remorse. You know, remorse from power means the mercy is removed from power. Okay, to be honest about Caesar, and then he says, let me just move it up. To speak truth of Caesar, let me be honest about Caesar. I have not known when his affection swayed more than his reason. So he says that to be honest about Caesar, I have never seen his emotions get the better of his reason. He thinks with his mind, he does not think with his heart. That's what he's trying to say. And he has a very rational way of thinking. So let me be honest. So Brutus is kind of analyzing it very clinically. Okay. So he says that he does not. That means that he does not take emotional kind of decisions. Uh, affection swayed means passions ruling his head. I mean, he doesn't think with his heart. He, thinks, he doesn't think with his heart. He thinks with his mind. Okay. But it is a common proof that lowliness is young ambitions ladder. However, he says, but it is also well known. It's a basic truth 
common proof means it's a basic truth that an ambitious young man uses false humility lowliness false lowliness means false humility you know you generally try to fake that oh you are a very humble kind of a person as a tool to climb the ladder you know say that no no mujhe wo nahi chahiye but you kind of climb up the ladder and use that and say no and other say no no you have to take it and you take it and go up so that is what is called false humility false modesty right so he says that lowliness is young ambitions ladder it is a well known fact and when he reaches the top and when this kind of young ambitious person by doing so reaches the top climber upward he turns his back on the people who supported him who helped him reaches the top he turns his back he kind of does not take care of them those who are beneath him right when he once attains the utmost rung when he reaches the top he then turn unto the ladder turns his back so he turns his back does not support all the people who actually helped him go up the ladder and reach the top by which he did did ascend that is climb up so caesar may caesar also may do the same okay so that's what he is trying to uh, talk about one minute yeah the base conning the base degrees base degrees is a reference to both the lower rungs of the ladder the lower steps also the lower ranks in society in general okay so base degrees is referring to both so caesar may also do pretty much the same that is again what i said the political insecurity and apprehension and fear among all these senators then lest he may prevent and since the coral will bear no color for the thing he is passionate thus so he is saying caesar may also do the same therefore just in case he does that just in case caesar actually behaves like that we must prevent him we must stop him we must prevent him and since the coral will bear no color for the thing he is and since the coral has nothing to do with what he is right now i must think of it this way right so since the coral it is not because of what he is now please understand this he is brutus does not want to kill him for what he is now but what he may become the apprehension the fear of what he may become tomorrow is what is forcing brutus to go with what cassius has told him okay fashion it thus so therefore i must think of it this way fashion it thus that i must think of it this way that what he is augmented would run to these and these extremities so if his position gets more power then his character will be transformed into the kind of extreme that i have just described if he gets the power the power will go to the head and he will become the kind of person i have just now described and therefore we must act now not because of what he is today but because of what he could become tomorrow i hope this point is very clear because this is an important point when you are talking about brutus agreeing to be part of the plot to kind of analyze brutus and this i'm talking from the point of view of a long format answer you should be able to kind of put this in context that brutus actually thought so okay so uh, so we must kill him while uh, so he says therefore we must think of him as a serpent's egg okay therefore think him as a serpent you know snake ka uh, anda from where the neck the little one comes out which hash would as his kind grow mischievous and kill him in the shell so he says the serpent the serpent's child the kid serpent will also be a poisonous snake right so once it is hatched it becomes dangerous like all serpents are his kind his kind means all the other kinds of snakes therefore we must kill him while he is still in his shell so the serpent's child is not being killed of because of what he is now it is being killed because of what he could become tomorrow you understand so julius caesar this kind of a metaphor being used in order to justify what they do what brutus does to be part of the plot against julius caesar i hope yahan tak samajh mein aa gaya guru lucius reenters the taper burneth in your closet the candle has been lit in your closet in your study sir searching the window for a flint i found now uh, a flint is a small piece of metal with which i guess he was would have lit the candle so while i was looking around or on the window for a flint i found 
this paper thus sealed up and I'm sure it did not lie there when I went to bed. I found this paper, it was like, you know, uh, sealed up like this, like crumpled or whatever like this, or probably it was stuck somewhere. Uh, and it was not there when I went to bed earlier. So it has been put during the night. So he gives him the letter. So Brutus says that you go to bed again. It is not yet day. Is not tomorrow the 8th of March, you know, talking about the 15th of March. I know not, sir. He says, look in the calendar and bring me and confirm it to me um, um, that it is. Uh, come and tell me that it is indeed the 15th of March. So he says, I will do that, sir. So then he says, then he exits and then Brutus says, the exhalations whizzing in the air give so much light that I may read by then. So he says that the meteors, the meteors, the heavenly objects whizzing in the air, they're all moving around in the air and they are giving so much of light. It seems to be too much of an exaggeration that they're giving so much of light that I can actually read the letter by the light of this meteors and he opens the letter and reads. So he says, Brutus, thou sleepest, awake and see thyself, shall roam and speak strike redress. So the letter is saying that Brutus, you are sleeping, thou sleepest, you are sleeping, wake up and see yourself what you are. So what Cassius had planned to write in such a way that Brutus feels self-important. So he says, see yourself what you are, will roam, etc. speak, strike, right the wrongs. Redress means to redress, you know, to kind of correct the wrongs. Brutus, you are sleeping, wake up. So they are kind of trying to incite him. Such instigations have been often dropped where I have took them up. So he says, I've come across many such calls. Now Brutus says, I've come across many such calls to action left in places where I could find them. So it's not something new as far as Brutus is concerned. And then he goes on, shall Rome and company, thus must I piece it out. See, I'm assuming it refers to company. Earlier also there is a C, you know, C and company. I'm just assuming. Okay. Thus must I piece it out. Shall Rome stand under one man's awe? So he says, the letter says that is Rome going to, etc. I must fill it in, piece it out. Uh, that is, I must fill it in. Will Rome stand in the awe of one man? Referring to Caesar, really Rome. So, uh, my ancestors did from the streets of Rome the Tarkin drive and uh, when he was called a king speak strike redress so you know he's talking to himself and he's also reading the letter at the same time so he says that my ancestors drove out Tarkin from the streets of Rome when he was pronounced a king see because before Caesar Rome was a republic it was not a monarchy and the fear is that Julius Caesar wants to be crowned king and therefore Rome would become a monarchy, not a republic. Not a republic means it is more democratic in that sense where the senators have a lot of power. Now Tarkin was called Tarkin the Proud. Okay. And he was notorious for his cruelty. Okay. So in that sense, a very disliked kind of a person. And after his expulsion from Rome, the Roman Republic was founded. So in that sense, he's an important. So that feeling that comparison to Tarkin is that, that Caesar could also be a Tarkin. Caesar could also be a serpent, right? So the, see all the negatives being reinforced about Julius Caesar. So they do not want to go back to the days of Tarkin the proud. So he says, speak. Now he's reading the letter again. Speak, strike, right the wrongs, redress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? O Rome, I make thee promise. So now he's talking to himself saying that, is this letter asking me to speak and strike to redress the wrong? O Rome, I promise you that you are meant to, if you are meant to receive justice and that is what you ask, you know, O Rome, I make this promise. I'm making this promise to you that if you are meant to kind of receive, you know, receive justice, fair play, and that is what you are asking, the full petition, thy full petition at the hand of Brutus, you will receive it at the hand of Brutus. The Brutus will ensure that you do get justice. Rome will get justice. So he's kind of promising Rome that, that, you know, if that is what you seek, that is what you will get. So it's very clear that Brutus does not want Rome to become a monarchy all over again. So Lucius comes back and says that 14 days of March are gone, wasted 14 days. So it means tomorrow is the 15th of March, what the soothsayer had predicted and then there is they hear some knocking Brutus says it's good go to the gate somebody is knocking Lucius exits since Cassius 
first did wet me against caesar i have not slept now wet means to sharpen the blade of a weapon or a blade okay so he says that since the time when cassius began to turn me against uh, caesar right and he has kind of sharpened his blade okay i have not slept so the time spent between waiting the time spent waiting between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion so he says the time that is spent between the moment you decide to do something right terrible to the instant when you actually do it i repeat the time spent between the moment when you decide to do something terrible and the time then you actually do it the of a dreadful thing so he's very op conscious of the fact that what they are going to do is not a very nice thing they may this justify it in many ways but he knows he describes it as a dreadful thing please use it as a keyword as a key phrase dreadful thing that's what brutus describes it as right so he says the time spent between waiting for the moment when you want to when you decide to do the terrible thing the dreadful thing and the moment when you actually execute the terrible thing it feels unreal it feels like a horrible illusion phantasma or a hideous dream so it feels like a dream phantasma uh, uh, phantasma or a horrible illusion the spirit the genius genius as in the spirit the genius and the mortal instruments and then are then in council so he says the spirit and the faculties the mortal instruments the hand the eyes the ears everything they are all they work together uh, and rebelling against the conscious mind and the man who waits becomes like a little kingdom okay so it's like a kingdom you know where different instruments are there right so they are all working at some kind of cross purposes with the conscious mind which perhaps is telling you that it is not the right thing that it is a dreadful thing to do so lucius comes back this is an important paragraph passage it says that it's your brother cassius at the door who doth desire to see you he does want to see you and he says whether well, he's alone he says no there are others with him brutus says do you know them he says no their hats are plucked about their ears so they are kind of their hats are pulled down over their ears so he is not able to see their faces clearly half their faces are buried in their cloaks so there is no way for me to recognize them by any feature so brutus says let them enter and lucius exits and says they are the faction means they are the people who are part of the conspiracy oh conspiracy shame is thou to show thy dangerous brow by night so he says so he's almost like personifying uh, conspiracy so he says oh conspiracy are you ashamed to show your face brow face even at night when evil things are most free because night is associated with darkness and the evil kind of thing right it's a time to do evil so is that even at night you are ashamed embarrassed to show your face if so when it is day where will you find a cave which is so dark uh to hide your monstrous face visage means where will you find a cavern a cave night time mein agar if you are hiding your face in the day time where will you find a cave which is so dark for you to uh, mask thy monstrous visage visage again means face seek non conspiracy hide it in smiles and affability so he says instead hide your true face right so he says no do not seek a cave o conspiracy so he says don't seek a cave seek non conspiracy do not seek a cave instead what you should do instead instead of trying to seek a dark cave even during day time what you should try to do is to hide your face be be behind smiles that is muskurate ro so that other people do not realize what is going on in your mind and heart right so friendly affability means friendly kind of behavior so if, because if you exposed your natural appearance right for if thou path thy nat nat native semblance on if you showed your natural behavior which would be that of wanting to kill somebody wanting to do something of a dreadful thing to somebody right uh, uh, native semblance means true face then hell would not be dark enough for you to be found and step even hell will not be so dark that you cannot be found and prevention means that it cannot be stopped okay uh, in um, classical mythology erebus was the uh, uh, region of darkness which is why that erebus the word has been used out here to convey that there wouldn't be that kind of a region of darkness we will pause 
explanation video number one out here. As I said, we will be doing it in six parts. The explanation video number one, I hope you have now understood. We are now moving slowly towards the actual conspiracy going to be done, executed, right? So this is act two, scene one is a longish and as I said, an extremely important scene. So now I'll see you in explanation video number two. Tata, bye-bye.